Hey, you can find this everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to Dominion. It. I mean, I'm recording. Yeah, Dominion Software Company <coughs> flipped. Okay, when they shut down voting Tuesday night, remember? Yeah. Those five states stopped. Right. It was so Dominion could flip their switches from Germany and flip the votes away from Biden. They had it set up. Flip the votes away from Biden? No, no, no I'm sorry, to Biden. To Biden, I'm sorry. Flip the votes to Biden. They flipped him that night because the next morning Trump wasn't ahead. He was he was ahead at midnight. Next morning he's hundreds of thousands behind. And they said this can't be. But this has been going on under the radar, and CNN and MSNBC is not reporting it. But now they'll have to. Authentically, are you telling the truth? That's what they're saying. That's what this lawyer said, and I've seen it on Fox now. Last night, I have, of course I have that time today. Uh, if that's true, that will change everything. Oh yeah. Okay, here's what they said. Here's what, here's what she said. She said, we have found the server, and she said, uh, we have, it's in our, in our hands now. She, they, President Trump went to the German president and said, we need this server, and we sent the military in and got it. That's why he fired that military chief last week. He wouldn't go. Really? Yeah. He wouldn't go, remember? So the, there's some things going on in behind the scenes that you and I aren't aware that's, of. That's what we heard, heard last night. My son-in-law put me onto it, and I said, what? Yeah. So if this comes out. Towards it being authentic. Yeah. If, if, they, if they can take this to the a judge, and the judge says, this is real, we got people going to hang, buddy, because that is treason. You can't change votes. That, that's treason against your country. But, oh but they also God. did it. It's, oh, my God. Now, listen God. to this. Dominion got started I, don't know how many years I didn't ago. realize that there was a company out there called Dominion that built nothing but software products did you no, no. but of course, it's there's, big. there's thousands of them out there that does that but it's big on the, you look up on the internet Google it Dominion software company Denver Colorado it's everywhere I mean it's, they're huge oh yeah they're worldwide they first got their start according to this lawyer when Chavez got voted in in what, Brazil is that where it is Brazil okay he hired them to build computers that they could control the outcome. That's when they started this 20 years ago or whatever. 10 years ago, I don't know. Now, if that's true, brother, you, we're all sort of holding our breath like, I pray it is. Because that would explain why, how could Trump have- The irregularities. A, yes, how could Trump have a million people show up at, at DC yesterday? <coughs> And if Biden had stood out there, there would have been a hundred. Okay, nobody's for Biden. Nobody. Now, some of them may be for socialist, but the bulk of America isn't. We don't want to go socialist. That's not America. So this is an inside job? Is that what you're telling me? That's what they're saying. That's what I've heard last night. An inside job. Yep. Created by the software. Yeah. And Pelosi's husband's involved in the company. Uh, what's Pelosi? It? Her husband. What? He's, he's like a part owner or something, or I don't know if he's on the board. I don't quote me on Madam that. Speak Madam Secretary? Really? Yeah, and then also, what's that other, uh, the black lady that's big in Washington from California? What's her name? A, a senator. Uh, I know who you're talking about. She's real mean and whatever. Oh, my Her husband's God. in it, too. Her husband's in it, too. Oh, my God. This could start a civil war. Yes. And Trump, see, he's been quiet the last week. Notice, you don't see much from him. He's been out a little bit, but not hardly at all. Like Lambert, he's out every day. And they said he's, he and the, our Secretary of State, uh, what's his name, uh, Pompeo or Pompeia? Pompeia. Yeah. He's been in Germany, Pompeia. He's been in Germany getting this all connected. Get the, get the server, get control of it. He has. That's what they said. That's what, that's what the news was. And Trump, of course, has been in huddled with the, the advisors and stuff. Waiting you to know, see what one happens. thing that I was not wanting to see, yeah. I was not wanting to see the Supreme Court again mm -hmm. make a call towards who was going to be right. the overseer of our lives, right. such as they did during the Bush and the uh, uh, Gore, Gore uh, uh, election. Yeah. I was hoping that this wasn't going to go to the Supreme Court. The way it's looking, if you're telling me these things that are going to be proven to be authentic, it will go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. 
It will go to the Supreme Court. One commentator made one comment about that last night, and I haven't heard anything today, so you know what I mean. But one commentator made a comment about what, what, what you're saying. He said, uh, what the courts need, will probably do a lower court, he said. A lower court will sure. just declare the election void and null, void the whole election. How could you count the numbers now? You can't. It'll no go way. to the Supreme Court. No, it goes to the House of Representatives. Or uh -huh. Senate, Senate, Senate. The Senate representative. Well, I'm sorry, it goes to both. I'm sorry, it goes to both. And each state gets one vote, and they have to vote by their political affiliation in their state. They okay. do. Yes, they have to. They have no choice of how to vote. And this is in the Constitution, which I didn't know all this. I didn't know that either. And if so, then it trumps in like that. Oh, my God. There'll be a civil war over this, won't there? If this if this yeah. comes out to be the way that you're talking yeah. about, yes. But look, we're seeing we're looking over that for CNN, all the news. Look where it puts them, because they've had they've had information about this. Absolutely, and I've said all along that a lot of these news agencies they don't they're not worried about telling the truth. They're worried about trying to bring up the the numbers towards uh, wanting people to hear and, and see them. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's no longer, and I'm going to tell you when that happened. I'm going to tell you when that happened. Mm -hmm. That happened long about the time whenever the Cold War ended between Russia and the United States, whenever Ronald Reagan was in power. Yep. If you'll remember, just about every one of our news agencies was the same then as it always was, which was ABC, CBS, ABC, the, the major and I think uh, without the cables, without the cable, yeah, um, that they, they was basically the the primary yeah. media at that time. And since then, we have been inundated with media from Canada and Germany and Russia and Australia. And I'm, I'm talking about there is more media out there than you can think of, man. And I ain't talking about social media platforms. I'm talking about real media people that present their stories to their own government or to their own people as it being authentic or legitimate. And the thing about it is, it ain't legitimate. You go to South America, you think that they're going to advertise legitimate votings down there in South America? You think they're going to uh, uh, t tell the truth about what's going on in Cuba or what's going on in Mexico? They get paid off and they say what they want to say. Well, if this happens to America, we are embarrassed. It's not only we are, are we embarrassed, no, we're humiliated. We're humili it's, it's degrading. So it's dehumanizing. To think that we would allow, to think that we was gullible enough to allow for something like this to happen. It's kind of like cyber war. Yeah, exactly. Cyber war. Um, yeah. That if we wasn't smart enough to put up resistance and put up firewalls yeah. to keep from other people from hacking into our, yep. our accounts, how come we was that vulnerable to ever have allowed for that to have happened to exactly. our own people to begin with? Exactly. Exactly. We've created a monster that we can't control. The beast is... is the, the spirit of us here, and probably here. The beast, listen to me, the beast is taking charge of the master to where the master is no longer in charge of the beast. And does it not talk about the beast in the Bible? Yeah. He who did not worship the beast and he who did not worship the beast number, they won't be able to participate in what the beast wants them to do. In other words, if you don't take the mark, you'll be left out in the cold, my brother. Yep. Well, if Trump pulls this off, and it's not really him, but if, if, if this his administration, off, if his administration, the, the rate, the, the whole, we'll have at least four more years, not of peace really with us, but we'll have four more years of grace because we had that, you know, the last four years has been a space of grace. Races. Yeah. Races this, races that. No, 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 no. Grace. Grace. Space of grace. Oh, the because he turned America back that wanted to be to back to God. He, he became political. He became for America again, and it's popular now to say, I love America, and he's okay Christmas Towards. and Easter and stuff, which we couldn't have under Obama for eight years. You know well, how it well, it got to the point during Obama's administration that uh, if you put out any type of Christmas uh, decorations as yeah. far as uh, Virgin Mary and, yeah. and the three wise men and, and stuff like that, you was almost shamed out of your community yeah. to the point that that they got to throwing eggs and 
to rotten tomatoes at your house towards you're not supposed to have this stuff out in the open. And Trump did change that. Yep. He did change we that. We have a space of grace where we were freed up as Christians. Now, if he goes another four years, we'll continue that. If not, we're in big trouble. I gotta take this one. Good talking to you. Thanks for hey, inviting come me. Come back, come back Wednesday. Thanks for inviting me. Come back Wednesday, me. Wednesday night. It's just church again. Just church again. Uh, my kids will be here. They'll be doing the music. And of course, they're, they're very good. They're fantastic. <laughs> I can't promise that because I've got too many ins and outs to go. Like I go to Trenton to go to the YMCA to try to take care of myself a little bit towards getting some exercise. And uh, I ought to be doing what you're doing, being out there walking. Um, but you're welcome to come Wednesday, 7, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. I appreciate that. It'd be great. It's but you touched my heart last night when you mean you was talking because you you made me feel so welcome and so open. And I'm like, man, you don't realize the background that I've got in this area, not just Greenfield, but all over West Tennessee. And you said, I don't care. I don't care what your background is. You're, we invited me and as long as you don't, you, yep. you told me, you said, as long as you're not disruptive yep. in any of my messages, you're welcome to come and say. Yep. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you criticize or you appreciate one way or the other, how I openly worship the Lord. Oh, that's awesome. But but th th that's the way that I've always been taught to worship the Lord, which is openly, because the Bible says that if you're ashamed of Him, He shall be ashamed of you. And I'm not ashamed well, you can in my you, Lord and God. You can tell you fit right in here, didn't you? Well, you fit in here. I didn't nobody shame me. That's right, and everybody else didn't nobody there. tell me I wasn't welcome. Everybody Come back else here. is doing their things. You're sitting here telling me just the opposite that I'm that I'm always welcome. See the difference? And, That's the and, difference between real people and, and phony people. I agree. I agree. We had a mixture of people here today. We got some one lady that's only been here. It's been about her third service. Okay. Okay. Uh, of course, Carrie here, this girl here, she's been struggling. She just got out of jail. I understand. She just got out of jail. And she's I understand. Really so these girls here. These two ladies, they work a lot with them. I was touched by the people that just moved into the area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know them very well or not. I don't know them at all. They lived for three months over at our church. You know, we've got a room I told you over there. Okay. They, they were married. I don't let ladies over there unless they're married. Okay. Some of them. But anyway, they stayed over there three months till they could get on their feet. And they came struggling. Good for and you. We've heard about them. And good for you. Them. And they're, they're really good people. They good. just got a house. And I helped him move yesterday. Good. And uh, we, I, we got a trader, you know, so I helped. Good. Him. Uh, so they got their. Uh, they got I'm their impressed hand. from where you come from. You said you come from Indiana, right? Yes. See, I listen to you. <laughs> I'm a good listener now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. what, Northern uh, Indiana to what, boot. Northern, Northern Indiana. Northern. Up there where they was making all the FEMA trailers. Well, south of there, three hours southeast, yes. Three, over by the High Line. Over by uh, by Columbia, Ohio. No, 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 no. Dayton, the High Line. I by Dayton, know. Ohio. No, no. Well, closer to that. Where I was at. If you if you've been to Indiana, there's Highway 27 runs up the state line. That's right. Okay, to Fort Wayne and on into Detroit, right. Michigan, and it goes down to Richmond and so okay. forth to Cincinnati. We were right on 27. I'm 50 miles from Fort Wayne and 50 miles from Richmond. I got you. Yeah. Did you go to college there in Indianapolis? No. What did you ever do in Indianapolis? Anything at all Nothing about anything? Did you ever go to any uh, speed car races? 500? Uh, we preached a lot there. Did you preach a lot there? We started evangelizing in 74. Man, don't they have a heck of a park there? Yeah. I mean, it's a huge park. Yeah, we preached a lot of revival in Indianapolis. Really? I preached revivals for 30 years, okay? So, whatever. And uh, we traveled, we had a gospel singing group and we traveled. Like my kids, that's what they do now. They're in. Uh, Cookville this morning. They'll be down by, uh, I forgot the town, right straight south of Cookville, down by Alabama tonight. Then they'll be back here probably later tonight. Then Huntsville, Alabama. Thursday. Huntsville, Alabama. Birmingham, no, Alabama. No, not that far. They're in Tennessee, actually. Coleman, Alabama. No, they'll be in Tennessee, but they're north. They're on the Tennessee line somewhere tonight. But they'll okay. be in Houston, Texas this week. Uh, so they got a band, they go travel around. Family. It's my, it's my daughter and her husband and two grandkids. Where'd you get your license at? Where'd you go to school at for preaching? Or you just oh. pick it up on your own? Basically, yeah, from experience. No, really? I'm with the United Pentecostal Church. You're I'm actually ordained. with you're actually with the the organization. Oh yeah, I'm ordained. So you know Brother Brown? Yeah, sure, sure. See, me and you need to talk about that. 
Okay. We've got some. I've got some history with Brother Brown. Okay. Personal. I know history. you missed him last night. Yeah. Personal history. I've been in it for, with him and his family. I've been in it for forty-five because years. Because I lived ten years in Jackson, Tennessee, oh. and there were some things that went on in the Pentecostal realm that uh, hurt my feelings. Yeah, of course. I, I'm not much at bringing up stuff. You know Brother Hagel down in Union City. Hagel, yeah. Yeah, you Hagel. know him. Oh, yeah. You know the one that preaches over there at Real Foot Lake? Yes. You know that, yes. that, that guy? I love them, yes. Yeah. He and his wife are awesome. Yeah, him and his wife are awesome. Yeah, they preach here. Oh, really? Yeah. So you know some of the people I know. You can find out. We're in section out, nine of the You can find UPC. out a little background about me towards who I am and how long I've been out there in the eyes of the general public. I looked you up on the internet Did later. You? It took me. I didn't have time much, so I don't need. I don't need those. Need well, do you found out that I I touched the people out in Oklahoma <laughs> towards being a whistleblower pertaining to there being a major government cover up out there well, of I the didn't, Timothy didn't McVeigh read, deal. I didn't read all that. But you didn't I, read I'm all that? No, I don't have time. I got you. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Anyway, come back. You're I welcome will. to come back. We're fighting spiritual warfare Absolutely. For, the kingdom of, for, for the kingdom of God for souls. Yes. She, she lives in Tiptonville. She lives in Tiptonville? She lives, she, he asked if we she do lives the in Real Foot Lake? UPC. What? <laughs> what a drive. That's 40, that's 40 minute drive. I, 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 hey, sister, are you going to try to find out about that? Let me ask you a question. Uh huh. Was me and you in the same grade together? No, you were older than me. You were in Chuck Besson's class, weren't you? Chuck Besson. Mm -hmm. Billy Wally. Uh, Deborah Feeney. Yep. Uh, yep. Was you, was you more in David's class? My no, younger I brother? Was older than him. He was a little older than him, so you was a class above him. Did you know that David died? No. I My didn't. younger brother's dead. I did not know that. Yes, ma'am. No, I didn't know that. And you know who helped put him in the grave? Who? People over there that I'm living around. Over there in the hop in Sidonia area. The Wickens. The the uh, the Sheffields and, and the and the uh, Ridgeways and, and a bunch of other families out there that pressured us whenever I come back in 20 and 14 and basically put so much pressure on David that he couldn't handle it to the point that he went to work at McLean Power on second shift, which starts at, I guess, three o'clock. And uh, long about four hours later, his supervisor walked up to him and said, David, you need to go home, you look bad. And then he said, no, David, actually, I think you need to go to the doctor. I think you need to go to the hospital right now. And David went to the park over at Trenton and took a cat nap for about an hour, hour and a half, and woke up, got feeling a little bit better, and made it on home, but he parked his truck in a different spot that he ordinarily parks it. And that morning, whenever I went and knocked on his door, he was cold as ice. He never got to see the sunrise. He basically died on his feet. Mm. Went to bed and never, never woke back up again mm. because of the pressure. I mean, we was having a lot of trouble out of those people to the to the degree that we was having to hire attorneys and go before Tommy Moore, the judges and stuff, up here in the courts. Do you know the Sheffields and the Ridgeways? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that bunch? Heathens? Just need God? You know, Donnie died. Donnie. Donnie Ridgeway died. He, he died uh, last year. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. He died of an aneurysm in his head. Mm. But a lot of this is the stem off from the Wiccans over there, the castle people, mm -hmm. the witches and the warlocks over there. Mm -hmm. That's what brought it all on. In other words, I was under heavy artillery, uh, a heavy attack to the point that, that they wound up taking something and flipping it around because David and I was concerned about some children across the road that was renting from Donnie Ridgeway. And they wound up turning it around to the point that I had to basically admit to a crime that I never committed, which was stalking. Because David and I was concerned about some little, three little children that was being abused across the road. It was either that or stay in jail. 
That was the only way I could get out of jail was, was admit to a crime that I never committed. Mm. They wound up putting a felony on For the first time in my entire life, I've never had a felony. Mm. And they put a felony on me right here in Weekly County. Tommy Moore, Tommy Thomas, the, the judicial justice system in this county is as corrupt and as dirty mm -hmm. as dirty gets. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Birds of a feather flock together. In other words, they cherry pick towards who they're not only going to attack, but they cherry pick towards who they're going to protect. That's true. And if, and if you're the right person and you've done a, a bad crime, you won't, you won't get nothing out of it. I'm sorry. That's okay. 